Before I started this video, I took some wedged clay and used my slab roller in class to roll out a slab of clay. So I will show you how to do that in class and then we will start this video. All right, so I have my slab and the first thing that I want to do is get off this canvas texture. So I'm gonna use my card and While I'm doing this, this also compresses the clay. I have a lot of clay here. Okay, so can I go also at an angle? Do it a couple of times across the clay. Okay. And then I'm going to get my template <clears throat> and I want to, this is the template for the side of the mug, I'll put that right there. And then I also have a template for the top of the mug and um, I'm going to use this guy, it's like a little knife, you could also use a Fetley knife. I just don't happen to have one at my desk. I'm going to go slow. So there is that and then I'll use this one here. You'd want to start this project at the beginning of a period. You don't really want to stop halfway through the project um, because the bell rang. So you want to um, give yourself enough time. All this extra clay, I'm going to ball up so it doesn't dry out. And I will use um, a little bit later in the project. So take off my templates, put that off to the side. Okay, so um, this is going to be a texture mug. So you can do all sorts of different things. I have little roller textures like this that I really like to use. Um, I also have texture mats. So I'm going to do a texture mat right now. I'm going to zoom in. Okay. And I can get one of these little pony rollers. And I'm going to um, use it up and down like this. This one's kind of cool because it changes halfway through. So I'm just going to put it down and roll on top. I think I'm going to switch it the other way. Awesome. So um, I'm just going to let this sit for a minute. Kind of off over to the side. And I'm going to do this as well. Move the bottom just for fun. Perfect. And while I let those sit and kind of chill out for a minute or two, I'm going to get some of my clay, just kind of wedge it in my hand, and I want to make the handle now because I don't want the handle to be made last. I want it to be made um, so it's the same dryness as these guys here. So I'm just going to make um, a carrot. So the way I take clay and make a carrot is I make my coil. And as I'm doing it, I want it to be thinner at one end than the other. So you can see that kind of looks like a carrot. 
Okay, so I'm going to keep going a little bit. There we go. Got my carrot. I'm going to cut about that much off. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slam it down. Okay, so I got that flat part there from just slamming it down. Then I'm going to take um, a damp sponge and kind of picking it up as I go like that. It kind of stretches it out. I can go the other side too. Now you can have a textured handle or you can have a smooth handle. Um, you want to make probably about three handles and then once they're dry, see, see which ones you like. So for this one, I will make um, a textured handle. So I'm just going to put this on there. And there's lots of different kinds of handles you can make. I'm going to just do one like this. Okay, so it would be like this is the handle right here. Okay, so I kind of push that down there and I just let it sit in the open air like this. Not flat like that, but up in the open air like that. Okay, so I'll just let that sit here. Um, there's some other handles I want to show you. So this handle here is pretty much like this handle here. It's a little different, but okay. So you want to have about two fingers um, when it's fired. And remember the clay shrinks, so maybe three fingers. I didn't, I didn't quite get three fingers in there. Um, this one is down more at the bottom. It's like a little bit different style, but um, it'll probably be two fingers once it's fired. And I also have a little added thumb rest right here. I just added a little coil of clay, okay, so I can kind of hold it like that as I drink. So just a few styles. All right, so I'm going to make another handle here. Let it sit here. It should start to get really dry. Um, we want it to be kind of leather hard. Okay, let's start working on our mug. So the first thing is I like mugs um, personally um, with a little bit up at the top that doesn't have any texture. Okay, so this one doesn't have any texture. So what I like to do is I like to take my um, stick that I use uh, for rolling out slabs. And remember, we did that in the last project. And I'll just put it about right there. And I'm just going to take my sponge and smooth out. I can also use my finger if I want to. Okay, here we go. And I'm going to take my template again and just check it. A lot of times when I stamp it, um, yep, it kind of stretches it out and it makes it wider. So I'm just, I want this to be pretty exact. So I'm going to go back and cut it a second time after I stamp. Okay. And I'm ready to start putting it together. So we want to have um, the edges, they're going to meet around like this, right, to make the mug. 
we want to have the edges be beveled which means kind of at a 45 degree angle and I have this really cool tool that does that and I usually use this side here um, so what you have to do is you have to do it um, one on the front and one on the back so on the front side I'll do it over here and I just take my tool and I line this part up right here that part up right there and then I just cut with the wire and it cuts off a bevel then I want to turn it over make sure everything is clean here so it doesn't get anything on my pattern that I've stamped and I bevel there so they're gonna kind of meet like this okay so then I want to slip and score where they're going to join And I'm going to stand it up, kind of gently coax it into a circle, and match those two bevels. Right there. See, I'm matching the two bevels. And first, I'm just going to push them together. So the way that I like to do that is I like to support from the outside and just push from the inside to condense. So I am trying to preserve the texture on the outside here. Then I can take my popsicle stick and I can start to blend the clay and I can blend it on the inside too very gently I'm trying to erase this seam Okay, and the next thing I need to do is put the bottom on. So this part here with the um, wiped away texture is the top. So I'm going to put the bottom on here, just kind of make it round. Okay, and the bottom's going to go on there like that. So I need to slip and score this. add some slip try to match it up and so first I just gently go around with my palm of my hand then I can turn it over I can just tap it down for a couple of times okay and inside I'm gonna put a coil in a minute I want to just take my finger and push with one finger as I'm wiping with the other and like here I have a little extra clay so I'm just gonna cut that little bit off just a little bit So, and I'm trying to blend this seam right here as I'm doing this. So I'm pushing and blending. Again, there's a little extra clay, so I'm going to cut that off.
Okay, now I am ready to put the coil on the inside seam. So inside there, I need a coil way down in there. And a really helpful tool to have while I'm doing this is this wood knife, specifically this part, although sometimes this part also helps. Okay, so get some clay, make a thin coil. Okay, and with the coil, I want it to be thinner than the pencil. So even thinner than the pencil. And I'm going to score it. So let's see. I need about... that much and so I'm going to actually score this little tiny coil here now at this point if you need to you can put it in your bag and put it on your shelf same with the handles okay once you get the walls and the bottom attached you can just put it in your shelf wait for the next day and then I'm also going to do that on the inside here right where the base meets the walls kind of go up the wall a little bit and down on the base a little bit There's quite a bit of slip down in there, but I do want to put a little bit of slip on my coil. Okay. My coil's getting really dry, so I want to add a little moisture. Okay. And I'm going to coax it down in there, and like I said, since I have really short fingers, I like to use this tool. And then I want to take it and I want to um, blend the, to the coil into the walls in the side. Take your time with this step. It's going to take time. And I want to blend it so I don't see the seam anymore. Okay, so it looks pretty good in there. Nice and blended out. Next thing I want to do is talk about the shape of the body. So if you want to have a cylindrical mug, that's fine, right? Like a cylinder. This one's kind of collapsing right there, but just have straight walls. So if you want to have straight walls, that's fine. You don't want them to bow in. Or if you want to make a mug more like this that's a little bit more rounded you can have the sides bow out towards the bottom here and kind of come out towards the top so I like making my mugs like that so I want to show you how to do that so you have to be pretty careful but so long as the clay is still plastic or soft leather hard you can do this one hand is supporting the outside the other hand is coming in and gently bowing, pushing out towards the bottom. See how I'm pushing out towards the bottom right there? So I'm just pushing right there. So from the inside, I'm changing the shape. Now, if you have a little bit of surface cracks, that's okay.
and you don't want to stretch it too far. You just want to stretch it a little bit each time you go around. Now you can see the shape has started to change here. Okay, so I'm going to keep doing that. As I'm going around, I'm always kind of bringing my center back to roundness here, the top part here, back to being around a circle. And then if I want to um, bow out the top part to kind of exaggerate the curve here, so there's a curve here, and then if I want it to curve out just a little bit for a lip, not a lot, I'm just going to take my supporting hand on the outside and the inside, I'm just going to start stretching the clay out just a little bit. You don't want to do too much here. Okay, and rounding the corners. Notice I haven't used any water. I'm just stretching the clay. If you have some cracks on the surface, just blend them together with your finger. You want the lip to be nice and smooth and rounded. Okay, so now you can see how much I've changed the shape from a cylinder. Okay, I'm going to let this rest um, sitting out for a little bit and I'll come back um, and we'll attach the handle the handles need to dry a little bit more, just a little bit, so they can kind of hold their form. So I'll be back.